I'm Bill Clough, and this is AdvoCast. Not the evening newscast anymore, but a new AdvoCast. Same name, different content. It's a weekly, appears on the website every Monday. Each segment will be devoted to a single subject, produced by one of the reporters here at The Advocate. What you see here on the screen will not be a repeat of what you see in the paper. This is one of the reporter's greatest tools, contacts in a Rolodex. Now in Washington, where I reported for some amount of time, we used to call the names in this thing Rolodex Commandos. For our premier program on Advocast, reporter Janai Plattenberg made great use of her contacts to discover a holiday important to a considerable percentage of our population. Juneteenth. Juneteenth is still celebrated, but there is not a coming together as it was back then. I'm reporting live from Galveston, Texas, the birthplace of Juneteenth. Now, as history tells us, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves in 1863. However, what many people don't know is that a lot of slaves didn't find out this news right away. In fact, it took two long years for slaves in Texas to find out that a change had finally come and they were now free men and women. It wasn't until 1865 that General Gordon Granger came upon the shores of Galveston, Texas and read the Emancipation Proclamation, making Texas the last state to free its slaves. Before General Granger stepped foot in Galveston, the institution of slavery was still very much alive and well. Blacks continued to work and live in inhumane conditions, individuals were still being bought and sold as property, and more importantly, they continued to be unequal to their white slave masters. It wasn't until shortly before Granger arrived that slaves began to have a glimmer of hope that a big change was upon the horizon. General Granger sent word ahead that he was coming and tried to get slaves gathered in certain locations in Galveston. And that was the reason for reading the uh, Emancipation Proclamation at so many different locations because everybody was scattered. Some of the places where Granger read the Emancipation Proclamation included Ashton Villa, Reedy Chapel, and the Osterman Building. They were rejoicing, they were howling, they were jumping up, they were clapping, they were saying, praise the Lord, we're free. It was here that Juneteenth celebrations as we know them today officially began. Over the years, people began celebrating Juneteenth in their own way. Victoria resident Dorothy Harris shares her memories of how the holiday has historically been celebrated in the Crossroads region, dating back to the 1930s. It was something that the blacks looked forward to because it was a one-time event during the year, and it was uh, started by what we call the Farmers' Union in Bloomington. Historically, Juneteenth has always been comprised of the three Fs, food, fun, and fellowship. But let's not forget the big C, church service. Had a church service prior to the dinner and just mostly visitations. Preparations for Juneteenth often began long before the 19th. A venue had to be set, performers had to be booked, and of course the cooking had to commence for the highly anticipated potluck style meal. And I can remember vividly that the, the barbecue pit was a hole in the ground. They dug this hole and put the wire over to do the barbecuing and they used pitchforks to turn the meat over. Picking out the right outfit was also an important part of the planning. New dress, new shoes, new straw hats. Longtime Victoria resident Agnes Jewett explains that as years went on, the regional Juneteenth celebration moved from Bloomington to Victoria. Blacks would come from everywhere, Rufirio, Coppas, San Antonio, Edna, uh, Crero, Hallisville, Yoakum, all the surrounding counties. Uh, and we had a big parade, went straight down Main Street. And um, it would last, it would always start at 10, and it would last till 12 noon. It was just that big. The tradition of singing also remained prevalent. Singing is uh, what I call a root, because a lot of people remember through songs. I got the love of my Jesus. Many families choose to celebrate their family reunions and Juneteenth at the same time. Ricky Mumford's family has been doing just that for more than a hundred years. Just a family field. That's, that's our main concern, to let them know who we are and who they are and where they came from. 
Today, Juneteenth is recognized as a state holiday in 36 states and the District of Columbia. Yet many people still don't know what the holiday is about. Honestly, I do not. Juneteenth means it's a parade. Um, I have no idea what Juneteenth is. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of yummy food that is cooked. <laughs> The fact that people can't easily rattle off details about Juneteenth is all the more reason why Sandra Avey thinks Juneteenth celebrations need to be bigger and better. A lot of them not being taught about their heritage. And they need to know because when we pass on, who's going to tell them? Juneteenth is still celebrated, but there is not a coming together as it was back then. She also thinks that just because a race is more than 145 years removed from slavery is no reason to stop celebrating the holiday. Oh, Juneteenth to be forever necessary. A long time coming. Reporting for the Victoria Advocate, this is Janai Plattenberg. Change gonna come.